The 1915 Atlantic hurricane season was very active. In fact, the last big storm prior to this year was the infamous Galveston hurricane in 1900. But first, go to patreon.com slash Louisiana Dread for more exclusive content on Louisiana history like the one you're about to watch. Now, this particular season saw six total storms and three major hurricanes, and one of the most disastrous ones was simply known as the New Orleans hurricane of 1915. Obviously back then they didn't have the creative naming process we have today with names like Gert and Isidore. And they also lack the modern forecasting and documentation. So the data is definitely incomplete. The 1915 New Orleans hurricane was the most intense storm of that year. And the horrific category four hurricane made landfall near Grand Isle in late September with 145 mile power winds. It took the lives of 275 people and caused $13 million worth of damage, which is equivalent to a little over $393 million today. It began on September 21st, moving across the Windward Islands as a small tropical storm. Back then, they tracked these storms on ship records and atmospheric observations on land. It would continue its trajectory towards Louisiana and reach Category 4 status by September 24th. This intensity system is a modern development known as the Saphir Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale. In 1969, a structural engineer named Herbert Sharif was commissioned by the United Nations to study low cost housing in hurricane prone areas. While on the study, he realized that there was no simple scale for describing the effects of a hurricane. Saphir would use a similar style to the Richter magnitude scale used for describing earthquakes and devise a scale from one to five based on wind speed that showed expected damage to structures. He gave his findings to a man named Robert Simpson, who was the director of the United States National Hurricane Center at that time. Simpson would use this scale and add in the effects of storm surge and flooding later on. Together, they developed the modern scale that we use today to measure the ferocity of these storms, which was introduced to the general public in 1973. On September 29th, 1915, the storm made landfall with 125 mile power winds and Tulane University clocked the central pressure at 952 millibars, which was the lowest pressure ever recorded in the United States at that time. It weakened rapidly as it went over land as most hurricanes do. Now in comparison, what made Hurricane Ida so bad in 2021 is that not only was it falsely reported as a Cat 4, it was actually a Cat 5 that traveled incredibly slow, allowing for much more devastation. Now, it's not really fair to compare these two hurricanes, but the destruction in 1915 was apparent immediately. In preparation for this storm, the Weather Bureau issued storm warnings across the eastern seaboard from Maine to Florida. By the time it was clear that this storm was heading for Louisiana, there was only a day of preparation that could be made. Now, keep in mind, when the warning would go out to the public that day before the storm hit, it was done through telegram and mail. The morning of the storm, evacuees reported no significant change in the water levels, but as it got closer, the water rapidly rose and posed a significant threat. Low-lying lands of Louisiana were quickly inundated with the rising storm surge, which at its peak was between 15 to 20 feet. That set a record. Now, parts of the Carrollton neighborhood of New Orleans were submerged in as much as eight feet of water for four days because of levee failure. Ocean swells pushed Mississippi River levels to six feet higher than normal, 100 miles upriver in Harvey. The biggest issue myself and millions of other people have when a storm hits is that the media tends to forget all about the lands outside of New Orleans. And this is especially true when talking about Hurricane Ida in 2021. Now, we will get to New Orleans in a minute, but this 1915 storm was utterly devastating to the areas outside of the city. In Leeville, for example, 99 of the 100 homes there were completely destroyed. Golden Meta and Cutoff saw equally horrific damage with over 100 homes demolished by these intense winds. 90% of the buildings around Lake Pontchartrain were also destroyed and over 100 miles away in Franklin, people saw over 14 inches of rain in a 24 hour period. 23 people died in Venice, but Plaquemines Parish saw the highest death toll at 200 and a lot of these bodies were never found. Entire communities like the Breton Island and the Filipino stronghold of St. Malo were utterly wiped off the map. In New Orleans, roofs were blown off buildings and the Presbyter on Jackson Square lost its cupola. The clock on St. Louis Cathedral stopped at 5.50 p.m., the height of the storm. The hurricane damaged the Times-Picayune building, hampering newspaper production. 
more church steeples in the city were blown down or significantly damaged than remained intact. The landmark Presbyterian Church on Lafayette Square collapsed, as did St. Anna's Episcopal Church on Esplanade Avenue. The Horticultural Hall in Audubon Park was also destroyed, and there were reports of waters from Lake Pontchartrain being forced backwards into the city's drainage canals by the storm, which is an event that would repeat itself more catastrophically with Hurricane Katrina 90 years later. After power to drainage pumps failed, parts of the mid-city neighborhood suffered significant flooding also. Nearly every building in the city sustained damage. The hurricane of 1915 will remain significant in Louisiana history, and although it wasn't as deadly as the 1893 Shanghai Kamenata hurricane, it was the deadliest up until Betsy 50 years later. These storms are getting stronger and stronger as the years continue, so please heed the warnings and prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. We couldn't bring you this information without your support on Patreon, and we'd like to thank all of those who have already contributed and encourage anyone watching this video right now to consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Louisiana Dread. For more Louisiana history, horror, folklore, and culture, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm Kyle Crosby, and this is Louisiana Dread Quick History.